Okay. So now that we have talking about the various things that you would have learned in the uh, K through 8 and some refreshment of some of the things you've done previously, we're going to talk a little bit about fractions, decimals, and percentages. Percentages tend to give people problems, but don't worry, we're going to go into it in a fair amount of detail. Okay, so for starters, let's look at this cake. How many pieces of cake are left? I'll give you a second to look at it. And remember, at any point, you can always press spacebar to pause the video. Okay. So one slice is taken, so three out of four, or three quarters in fractional form, of the cake is left. Okay, so each one of those slices, since we slice the cake in four slices, we kind of are gluttons. We kind of like eating a lot here. So we make those slices extra large. In real life, hopefully, you'd slice it a little thinner, maybe eight slices. So if we sliced it into eight slices, how much cake would we have left? Think about that a second. We'd have six out of the eight slices left because that one huge one, one out of four slices would instead be two out of eight slices. Okay? And we got that by multiplying one fourth by two. Okay. So look at these. Each one of these is a fraction. So just a visual representation of each one of those fractions. I'll give you a second to look at it. You can pause it if you want. I'm just going to go over it then. Okay. So the first one's one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one seventh, one eighth. Pay careful attention to the one eighth. The one half, one fourth, one eighth. Take a good look at that to give you a visual idea. One ninth, one tenth, one, th one eleventh, and one twelfth. Okay, so think cake fractions. You know, it's a piece of cake. All right. If you think concretely, this will enable you to perhaps get a better idea of what's going on. A fraction is x parts out of y, and half of that cake was 2 out of 4 pieces. 2 out of 4 can be reduced to 1 out of 2, 1 half. So mathematically, we do this by dividing both the numerator, the top number, and the denominator, the bottom number, by 2. You can reduce or increase a fraction by doing the exact same multiplication or division to the numerator and denominator. So as long as you do the same thing to both of them, that's fine. The reason why is because you're effectively multiplying them by 1. And you can multiply any number by 1 without changing the value. Reducing fractions. Factors. Finding common factors makes reducing fractions quicker and easier. So if we have 60 out of 80... A common factor to both 60 and 80 that they can both be divided by is 20. So we factor out 20 on both. And you'll see below I wrote 3 times 20 over 4 times 20. And since they both have that 20 in them, we can cross out the 20. And our answer is 3 quarters. We just reduced 60 over 80 to 3 quarters. We're going to talk more about factoring a little bit in a later lesson, but I want to introduce it now so you have an idea of what I'm talking about later. Okay, comparing fractions. The key question I'm always asking in life is, which is more pie? Seven slices in a 12-slice pie or five slices in an eight-slice pie? You want to make sure you're not getting ripped off at the pizza place. So how are you going to compare them? Okay, we'll come back to it in more depth later, but it's something to think about, especially when you get to the reinforcement questions after the lesson. 
Here's a fraction reinforcement exercise. 190 units were sold the previous year, or 19 twentieths of current sales. 200 units were sold total in the current fiscal year. Half of those units were sold in the first quarter. Quarter 3 and quarter 4 combined sales is one half of quarter 1. How many units were sold in the fourth quarter? I want you to look at that pie graph and solve that problem. You can pause the video by pressing the space bar and I'll give you a moment to do that. And then I'll go on to the next slide, but please pause the presentation so you can take time out to give this a shot. And then I'll show you the answer on the following slide. Okay, I'm back with the answer on the following slide. Hopefully you had paused on the previous slide and taken the time out to figure out the answer. Okay, now figuring out the answer, how did we figure that out? You're going, oh, I don't, I got something a little different. And well, that's not quite right. So you have to go back and figure, well, what's important? Remember, back in the pre lesson to the first one, I said, the GED people, they're tricky. Sometimes they include this irrelevant information. You have to find the irrelevant information and put that out of your mind. It says 190 units were sold the previous year. We don't care about the previous year. They asked about the fourth quarter. That's in this year. We don't care about any previous year. So the 200 units were sold in the current fiscal year. Half of those units were sold in the first quarter. What is one half of 200? That's 100. Quarter three and quarter four combined sales is one half of quarter one. Quarter one was 100. So quarter three and quarter four combined sales is half of quarter one. So it's half of one half. So you could look at the graph and figure it out visually. Or you could look at the numbers and figure it out that way. So one half of, one of, of 200 is 100. One half of quarter one, which is quarter three and quarter four combined sales, is 50. One half of 50 is 25, which is the total quarter four sales. And that would be one eighth of the total. Okay, so that should say 25. Okay, and I'll pick this back up in the next lesson, and I'll see you there.